Hey everybody, this is George Brashear with Shakedown of Thunder Sports, and you're about to watch the two Irish brothers. Go Irish! How's it going, everyone? I am Indy Sean 45. I'm Irish Benjamin 57. And together we are the two Irish brothers. Now we have a lot to talk about here in this video, but first off, something very important that I feel needs to be said. Um, now, of course, Ben and I have only been doing the show not, not quite a year. I think we started back in like February, give or take, somewhere in there. But before that, it was just us doing our own channels. And of course, since we've joined forces, you know, there's been a lot of times where I've had to, you know, restrain myself because there's others involved, not just me, unlike on my own channel. But I got to say this. After last night, what I saw from a lot of people in the Notre Dame fan base, absolutely pathetic. I mean, all across the board, Ben, I know you saw it too. And let me make something perfectly clear. Ben and I, just like the rest of you guys, were angry and frustrated and pissed off with how things went yesterday against Clemson. That's fair. As fans, we have a right to feel that way. But there's a difference between being angry at your team and then completely turning your backs on them and saying, oh, they don't deserve this, fire Brian Kelly, all the nonsense garbage that we hear i mean this is this is honestly the most pathetic display i've ever seen of a fan base turning on their team i mean i've never seen this anywhere else really so and there's there's a few people well not well, not particular people but like websites i'd love to call out but i'm not going to do that so you know who you are so i mean ben i know you were feeling very similar to that yeah, <clears throat> it is. It's just a shame that some people have to say and do the things that they say. And I can't imagine going through life being, quote unquote, that miserable, especially when it, at the end of the day, it is a game. And at the end of the day, you know, these kids and their kids for Notre Dame played their hearts out last night and people say what they say. I mean, it's, it's a crying shame and it's, you know, sad in my opinion. And I will, uh, I will leave it at that. And like you said, it's nonsense and, and it's noise. And at the end of the day, <clears throat> we have a result. And with that, we have a lot, as you said, to discuss. Well, all I know is one last thing I would like to say, and then I'll, I'll move on from it. But anybody out there watching this, and I don't know how far this video is going to get, but if you call yourself a Notre Dame fan, then you back your team all the way 100%, and that includes the coaches. All right? There's a lot of things that could have could have been done yesterday from both on the field and from our coaches on the sidelines and the press box. But... If you're a true fan, you support this team and you back them. Be angry? Yes, but support them. Don't turn your back on them and start calling for people's heads. That rhetoric is getting ridiculous and it's becoming cliche and stale. So you're either a true fan or you're not. And if you're not a true fan, get the hell off the bandwagon. And I'm talking mostly to all you people, you know, think Nebraska 2000 and Georgia 2017 who sell out the team but then still complain. And for those of you who say, I have no right to judge, I'm a true fan of this team, and I support them 100% and back them all the way. So, yeah, I do have a right. I will call out the phonies, and I'm not afraid to do so. And let me tell you something, and Ben can contest, the, or not contest, but he can confirm this. I'm being nice right now. So, yep. All right, so enough of, enough of dealing with, the, uh, with all those, those uh, losers. Let's get right to the point. So... We make the ACC championship game with a rematch against Clemson. And, yeah, it did not go the way that we wanted it to go, Ben. And that's putting it lightly. Yeah. 
it is uh, a very disappointing outcome for the Fighting Irish. Um, the better team obviously won yesterday, or yesterday evening, I should say. But there is always room for improvement. There is always chances at redemption, if you will, and there is always um, brighter days ahead. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, our our good friend uh, George Bashura, he said it the best. Um, you know, he made a, a post or a tweet. I think it was both a post and a tweet uh, all over the place. But he said, you guys ever had a bad day at your job? Well, it's no different in college football. These guys had a bad day. And I just, you know, you know they picked the wrong day to have it. But look, I'm just going to get to the brunt of it. There's not much to say here, really. I mean, Clemson... They were ready for us this time. They had our number, and they went out of there and took care of business. And, you know, what, what Kirk Kerbstreet said about them having a chip on their shoulder, they had it. And, look, I'm not going to badmouth us. I'm not going to, you know, be like the haters, but I am going to tell the truth. We didn't have that chip on our shoulder like uh, we thought we would. And we should have had we should have had a chip on our shoulder because you you still have every, everybody telling us that oh what we've done this year is a fluke um, we don't belong here we don't belong there we're not going to stand a chance against this team or that team and all that same nonsense we always hear we didn't we didn't show it yesterday we just I'm going to be completely honest with you I'm sure there was a game plan uh, put in place yesterday but I don't know what the hell it was I don't know what the hell we were doing out there on that field. Yeah, no. I mean, whatever game plan it was, it was not executed the way that I think they intended intended it for. And like you said, the chip on the shoulder was was on Clemson's, not Notre Dame's, big time. And, you know, I think Trevor Lawrence had a very, very big chip on his shoulder after what went down in November, him not getting to play, fans getting in his face when they rushed the field, all that kind of stuff. And it adds up. And uh, we heard it from one of their linebackers, too. You know, he said, we're tired of hearing about Notre Dame. We're tired of of hearing all this noise and stuff. We're out there to prove ourselves. And Clemson came out and proved, proved to themselves, that's for sure. Um, and the hats are off to Clemson. I mean, they played yeah, amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, they deserve that that championship. They're sixth in a row. And that's saying something, too. Anytime you can, you can go and say that a team – no matter what conference they're in, win six straight championships in said conference. That's that's a very, very impressive team. So Clemson deserves all the credit in the world. Um, we wish them luck in the future in their future endeavors. But, you know, switching back full circle to Notre Dame, game plan was not executed no, at all. No, it wasn't. And for the record, let me just add – we could, we could, uh, you know, we'll get to that this later, but we could be a part of their future endeavors in the, in the very near future, but yeah. we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, yeah, the, uh, like I said, it was hard to tell what the game plan was. We looked lost. I mean, we looked, uh, I will say this through that first quarter, we looked, we looked pretty, pretty decent on both sides of the ball. Um, but after that, it just all seemed to just, to t we just seemed to, to completely tank to just just we couldn't get in sync we couldn't uh make anything happen um and um i i know you were probably wanting to say this first but i'm just going to go ahead and say it so we can get it get started talking about it but tommy reese up in the the booth calling the plays um i i he he in particular needs to get more aggressive with the play calling well, yeah, I mean, go ahead. I was gonna say he he has this, and it's not it's not only been him. I can't say it's only been Tommy Reese, but he he's continued that trend of it. This play calling of trying something, and this is this is probably an exaggeration, but this is just the best way I can explain it. He's fallen into that trend of trying something nine straight times, and if it doesn't work those nine straight times, he tries the tenth time and hopes it works then. You can't yeah. do that. If something's not working, you got to fix it right away and go with something else. And that did not happen yesterday. 
And I'm not saying all the stuff that I'm talking about right now. I'm not saying that we necessarily that we necessarily would have won if we changed it. But these are kind of big factors that do help. Yeah. No. We in the beginning of the game, you know, Notre Dame had a chance to really take it to Clemson. You know, we saw it with we went down the field, got a field goal, um, and then they got the interception, and they started driving and they couldn't get anything. You know. And that would have been a 10 nothing lead at that point if Notre Dame had taken advantage of both. And, I mean, if you want to get even more technical, that could have been a 14 to nothing lead at that point as opposed to a 3 to nothing lead. And that hurt really, really bad. But then Clemson righted their ship, as usual, as a championship team does, and they made their necessary adjustments. And then they started really hammering away at Notre Dame. And our defense – made the adjustments they needed throughout the game. The offense did not make adjustments to the situation at hand. And I don't like blaming coaches and staff for said problems. But when you see that Clemson's blitzing, do you think it is a good idea to throw a deep ball? I mean... If all the blitzes are getting to you and the deep balls aren't working, then why not a swing pass or a screen? I mean, I, I'm, I'm not saying, like, I'm the greatest problem solver of all time when it comes to football, but that's just kind of football 101. Yeah. I mean, no, we're not, we're not coaches. If we were coaches, we'd be doing it. So I, I just – I don't know. I don't know if it's Tommy Reese just still trying to figure everything out. I mean, he's young. He's very inexperienced, you know. And on the flip side, okay, then that's on Ian Book. I mean, if Ian Book doesn't like what he's seeing, okay, audible. Audible out and say, okay, well, I see this. I don't like this. Let's make an adjustment at the line. You know Trevor Lawrence does it. I mean, I don't know Alabama's quarterback's name, but you know he does it. I mean – I just – I don't see that. And the defense made their adjustments. The offense was just stagnant and putrid throughout that game last night. I, I, I mean, it was not the same offense that we saw in November. Let's just say that. And what boggles my mind, and I saw other people talking about it, where's Lindsey? Where's Jordan Johnson? I mean, why aren't these guys on the field? What's, what's going on? I mean, I just – I, 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 you see this guy for Clemson, number six, make that spectacular catch, okay, and then you realize that that dude is a youngin. I mean, he's not even a, senior, a junior or a senior making these plays. This is a guy that's still a very, very young player in his career. Where's our guys then? I mean, I just it, – it's mind-boggling. And then you wonder why these kinds of things happen. I, I, I just I don't I don't understand it. And I, I get that the Clark Lee thing was maybe a distraction. And you know, I will admit somebody messaged me and said that that's a lame excuse and it happens everywhere. And and I agree, you know, I mean, focus at the task at hand, and they said that Clark Lee is with them until the end of the season, however long the season is, whether it's they get in the playoffs and win the first game and then don't win the second, or whether they get to the national title and play all play two extra, Clark Lee is with them. So, I mean, I I don't know. I, I really don't know. It's frustrating as a fan. Yeah, I thought the same thing, too, with uh, with Clark Lee and whether that whether a distraction makes a difference or not. Um. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess sometimes it could, but still, though, whether you know one of your coaches is on the way out, I mean, that should be even more motivation for you to play harder for him and not, you know, just let that be the reason why you didn't play well. I mean, right. that's the, that's the bo- that's really the bottom line of what it comes down to is we just – we didn't play well at all yesterday. We really didn't. I mean, of course, the only bright – the only real bright spot of the game was – uh Chris Tyree scoring the touchdown in the the fourth quarter and um you know the nice start that we had to the game along with the the Kyle Hamilton interception but i guess one you know one positive that you did point out already is the the uh the defense they did make their adjustments 
Uh, but but it's it's still hard to call that a good performance, though. I mean, we just uh, we couldn't stop the Tigers. I mean, it was the Tigers' day yesterday, not ours. And yeah. they again, they get all the props in the world. But you know, breaking breaking this game down, which I mean, how much is there really to do? I mean, they shut us down in the running game. Um, they got they really got the pressure put on Ian Book, and that's and though these are two problems that I saw yesterday with the offense that. And he, and even even my my brother was able to see this too, um, but one of the biggest problems yes, yesterday was Ian Book. He had happy feet the whole game. He was not comfortable at all. Yeah. And you know you could you could say oh well gee well a quarterback with happy feet you know he, that you could you could put put it all on him but why does he when but then when you look at it why does he have happy feet you know you look at the replays uh, downfield. Our receivers are not able to get any separation from the defender. And again, I'm not taking anything away from the Tigers' secondary or saying that they're not good, but as a, a wide receiver, you have to get separation to give your quarterback a chance to throw the ball. Now, granted, too, there were times where Ian should have just thrown it away if it wasn't there, and he didn't do it. But all I'm saying is those two, those two problems correlate with one another. So they yeah. got they got to figure this out before uh, the trip to Arlington. Yeah, yeah. I mean, offensive line play was not the same, not the same offensive line play that we that we saw in November. Now, I will say, Kyron Williams continues to be an amazing blocking running back. There was a play last night in the game, and I almost tweeted about it. I mean, the game was over at that point, but. Um, there was a blitz, and I mean, Kyron Williams leveled the linebacker that was blitzing. I mean, he laid his ass out. Nobody's talking about it, but I'll bring it up. And that just continues to impress me. But there's a bright spot. But yes, I mean, there was no – the reason that Ian Book has happy feet, he has no line. None. He, there, the line was non-existent last night. There was constant pressure. There was constant players breathing down his neck. You know, when you have no separation, you can't throw the ball. You got to take the sack. You got to try to throw the ball away. I mean, Ian Book's not Brett Favre. He's not just going to throw it up and hope his receiver comes down with it. He's going to, you know, run around and and try to make something out of nothing. And we saw it all game last night. And he, and usually, you know, he finds a way out with that. But even that wasn't working last night. You know, the whole scramble drill and all that. It just you know, like I said, uh, so many times already, Clemson was locked on, and you know they had they had us figured out. They had us figured out, and um, but I will say this though, despite how ugly yesterday was, the fact that we got there after hearing for years that oh, if Notre Dame was in a conference, that we'd never get past 500, we'd never, you know, have any success. We proved a lot of people wrong on that alone. Now I know winning the game is what you need to do. That's the icing on the cake right there. That that's what puts you over the top. We didn't do that, but still though we we did get there, and you can't say that that doesn't mean anything. Right. Yeah. No. And and the people that are taking legit shots at Notre Dame are the ones that have a team that went 500 in their conference and didn't even make the conference championship. So it is what it is. I mean, yes. You know, we've heard for years and years and years that if Notre Dame plays in the conference, you know, they're not going to be able to compete. And the first year that Notre Dame's in the ACC, they challenge Clemson for the title. And they become that new bully. So, you know, there's something, you know. But the task at hand is to win games. And unfortunately... People are disappointed that they didn't beat Clemson in the ACC championship, and I mean, justifiably so. So are we? Yeah, and it, it, it's a, it's on it's it is disappointing, and it's understanding to have that anger and that frustration because that narrative that we're still unfortunately a part of that narrative where when the even bigger lights are shining on us on in, you know in the big the big games the championships we're still not able to get over that hump. I mean, we have we have to find a way to make that happen. And I know people can give all their reasons in the world. It's you know because we don't we don't do we don't recruit these guys or we don't 
uh, play this way or, or take any any um, reason that you want. You know, you you just, you have to find a way to make it happen. You have to find a way to properly adjust and just get over that hump. I know it's easier said than done. What I'm saying is very simple, but you know, we have to get we have to get through this. Otherwise, we're going to keep hearing what we, what we've been hearing for you know <laughs> till whenever. You know, I'd love I'd love to shut these people up, but you know. You got to you got to get it done on the field to shut them up because they're not, you know, because unfortunately people aren't, there's a lot of people out there that aren't going to give you respect for just getting there. And even and hell, even if, even if we were to win it, we probably still wouldn't get respect. But so I guess I guess it's kind of a double edged sword when you think about it. Nope. Yeah, you got to be you got to be as consistent as Alabama to prove it to make anybody believe that you can do anything. And Clemson is doing that. Clemson is the new the new Alabama on the block. So, you know, it is it is what it is. And, you know, like you said, Clemson, it, everything went Clemson's way. Everything went Clemson's way. Everything. I mean, the catch that that guy had, I mean, there was, no, there was nothing that our secondary could have done on that play. Nothing. There was nothing. And, and like you said – a bad day at the office. Teams have that. I remember when when Alabama played Ole Miss a few years ago. Everything went Ole Miss's way. Everything. Is it because Alabama is overrated and Alabama is just garbage? No, it was not Alabama's day. I mean, it just it is what it is. Teams have that happen to them. I mean, Clemson lost to Syracuse. Everything went Syracuse's way that day that Syracuse upset Clemson. I mean, it is what it is. It happens. Unfortunately, this time it happened on the biggest stage other than a national title that you can be on. Yeah. So, I, I mean, and I, I don't, I'm sorry. I, don't, go ahead. I just, I, 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 at the end of the day, I, I, I don't know what to say. All, all I can say is, is that, you know, I back the team 100%. I'm never going to give up on them. I'm always going to think that they, that they can beat whoever they're playing. I will never. I will never say that Notre Dame is going to lose a game, ever. Never, ever. Because if I was playing for Notre Dame, if I was a legit player or a legit coach at Notre Dame, I would always, always believe that we can beat whoever we're playing. Period. End of story. And if you call yourself a fan and a true fan at that, that is how you think. Yeah. And I'm, again, I'm not saying that people can't be angry over, over what happened yesterday, but, you know, a game like this, you know, when the team and the coaches just, you know, had a rough one, they got they got beat badly, they you know, they're not they weren't feeling the best. This is where as a fan, you have to be there for your team cuz this is these are the times where they need you in their corner the most. It's like, do you have your back or do you have their back or are you just going to turn your back on them and, you know, show your true colors of the piece of crap that you are? No, I think you'd want to have your team's back if you're a true fan. Be disappointed, comes, be angry, but have your teams back. Yeah, and, and it comes back to bandwagoning. Yeah, I mean, you can be a bandwagoner even if the team goes ten and one. I mean, you know, the team goes ten and one. People are like, well, how can you be a bandwagoner? They're still really good. Okay, you turn your back on them with that one loss. I mean, that's the definition. Well, and the and the one thing that I've heard a lot in the last 24 hours, and even long before this, people all in our fan base saying, "Fire Brian Kelly! Fire Brian Kelly!" Okay, first off, who out there is available right now that that you can get that's better? And two, you guys all loved him when he was winning the first when he won the first 10 games. You didn't say shit about it then, but oh, we lose one game now. It's a uh, uh, kick out everybody, clean house, and all that garbage. So it yeah. just, I'm I just really. I'm not trying to go back to our fan base and the crappy people in it, but I just the two faced people that we have in our fan base that are so ready to, to just quit and give up and it's unbelievable. But uh, I shouldn't even have went there I because I'm gonna go on I am gonna end up going on a rant on that and I don't wanna do that. Um but I will address one thing that I hadn't covered yet. You know, we talk about comparing this game to the November seventh matchup, you know, and with all, with all that Clemson did not have that day, you know, I guess, uh, I guess maybe it does make more than more a, a difference than what I thought it did, which I never said that it didn't make a difference, 
But I guess I underestimated how much of a difference it actually does make. I think the narrative is there for that. I don't know. I don't know if it makes the difference as much as I think other people are willing to say it does. Um, Clemson was definitely the hungrier team yesterday. I mean, that's that to me is the game changer in that game. I mean, Clemson wanted it more than Notre Dame. And it's hard to say that as a fan, but they did. And Notre Dame wanted it, in my opinion, more than Clemson did in November. They were tired of hearing it. They were tired of hearing about Clemson. They were tired of hearing that they weren't good enough to compete. They were tired of hearing, you know, what does Notre Dame do in the big game? They lay an egg and all of that. I think Notre Dame came into yesterday's game too confident. I really do. I, I think that they thought that they could get by with some of the things that they did yesterday, and it, you can't do that against a team like Clemson. You can't. You can do that against a team like North Carolina. You can do that against a team like Syracuse. You can do that against a team like Boston College. But UNC and Clemson or Clemson and Boston College are two totally different levels. I'm sorry. I mean, and Clemson showed it yesterday. Yeah, and I'll tell you this. I still stand by the fact that to, to just guarantee that we were going to lose yesterday just because Lawrence was back and uh, Skalski was back, that's, st that's still wrong because, you know, George said it the best. You can beat any team on any given day with or without all their guys, you know? Yeah. So it's, so it, it's, it's just ridiculous to, to say that, to just guarantee a game is a loss just because one guy's back, or in this case, a couple guys are back and so on. But, you know, what more can you say about yesterday? We just were outplayed and outmatched and we were humbled. Yeah. I think this is a big, uh, this is a big learning experience right now. You know, um, this is now the second time that this Clemson team has embarrassed you not only in a game, but in a national spotlight game. Okay. So you get a chance to right all these wrongs. Okay. You can either fight to your heart's content and come close or you can get blown out. And yesterday they got blown out. And like I said, you have a chance at redemption. And it's the same applies for that. You can either fight and fight and fight and either win the game or come close. Or you can get blown out. And you know what will happen if they get blown out a second time. Yeah. That's actually a perfect transition into the next topic here of this video. And drumroll, please. Cue the haters. Cue the haters in both the non-Notre Dame uh, community and... And in the Notre Dame fan base who love to hate on this team, basically the ones who are like Randy Quaid's character from Major League Two, who constantly look for the negative, cue all those people. So, Ben, as we know by now, it's uh, the announcement was, announcement was made several hours ago at this time. We made it. Despite yep. losing yesterday in the ACC championship game, we have made the college football playoff. And we will be taking on Alabama number one ranked seeded Alabama in the uh, the Rose Bowl. However, let me rephrase it, the Rose Bowl in Arlington, Texas. Yes. They, they moved the site, as we all know. Yes. So yeah. here's the thing. We know that that noise of what I just described, that noise is going to be there. Oh, Notre Dame doesn't deserve it. They, they don't deserve to be there. They don't belong. They're going to get blown out again. Well, you know, we'll save – We'll save the game for the actual preview that we do for it for the Rose Bowl. But the point is what I'm getting at is we made it and we have a another big, big chance to redeem ourselves uh, and try to change this, uh, this narrative of us playing on the grand stage. Yes. Yeah, it is. It is a redemption game against Alabama. And... You know, everybody, like you said, the noise are going to say that Notre Dame doesn't belong. And, you know, they're just going to blow it again and all that. And we've seen the line. The line is out for this game. It is a 17-point 
um, difference between Alabama and Notre Dame, according to uh, pundits and betters. So there you go. That just shows the quote-unquote disrespect, the quote-unquote narrative. Um, You know, us Notre Dame fans, we have been here before. We have seen it. We have heard it. And now, like you said earlier, now is the time to have the teams back. Okay? Do you have the teams back? You can go the route, well, Notre Dame isn't going to do it. They're, they're going to play Alabama, and they, they are going to get blown out. There's no point. And I've seen it already. I've seen it today from, from quote-unquote oh, Notre yes. I've seen it. Or, or you can be the fan that actually backs their team and says that, no, 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 you know, Notre Dame can win this game. You can go one of two ways. I don't care what the actual haters say. I don't. You know, I rep my team. Like I said, I will always think that my team's going to beat whoever they're playing and at the end of the day. Um, and, you know, I, I commented at somebody and said, Notre Dame could have gone undefeated, beat Clemson by three touchdowns both times, and be undefeated and still going to play Alabama, and there'd still be people that think that Alabama's going to curb stomp them. It is what it is. We as Notre Dame fans have heard it forever. And honestly, I could, you know, the the, the haters uh, that are non Notre Dame fans, we expect that from them anyway. We expect that, but it, it's just, it's it, it's like it's really the ones in our fan base that are acting and talking just like them that disturb me the most. I mean, that, I mean, I've it, it, it's just unbelievable how our fan base, not everybody, of course, you know, I've seen plenty of good ones in the past uh, the past twenty four hours, but. Everybody, I mean, we made the playoffs today. We made the National College Football Playoff. And there's yeah. people in our fan base that are unhappy about it. Yeah. But I, what the hell is wrong with uh, with where this fan base has gone? What is What the hell is happening? The fun thing is, is that Notre Dame's in. Okay? We're in, and now it is time to switch gears. Okay? You lost to Clemson. It's in the past. You get through it, you deal with it, and you move on. Now we're moving on to Alabama, okay? Notre Dame and Alabama, two of the most historic programs of all time, are going to face off once again. And this, that a lot of people don't think about, is a good kind of preview, if you will, for the home-and-home series that we got planned against Alabama in future years. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait to wear my Notre Dame gear and rep the Irish. I can't wait to hear all of the excuses, and I can't wait to see what unfolds. All I know is if I'm Brian Kelly or, hey, if, even if I, I myself had the, the chance to address the team right now, um, I seriously doubt they watch YouTube videos, and I don't know if they'd watch us. But um, all I know is if I'm if I had a chance to address them, I'd be like, "Listen, guys. Now you know what it's like to be humbled. All right, you got humbled really, really bad on the national stage yesterday. But like you said, Ben, you know, it's in the past. Yeah, it's only less than a you know, it's 24 hours ago, but that's history. That's in the past. What do you want to do?" Do you want to just lie down, just be happy with showing up in the playoffs, just be happy with making it, um, and not give, you know, not play your hardest? And if and if we lo- be like, oh well, if we lose, we lose. People expect us to lose. Do you want to have that mentality, or do you want to have the mentality of a champion and know that you can actually win? Have that heart that you can actually win. Look. Uh, I don't want to get too, talking too much to, about Alabama because we got a preview for that for that matter. But I just tell those guys think of, of what that was like to be humbled, and how everybody's talking right now and and talking all this shit about you. You know, it doesn't feel good, does it? So, little in a uh, let's see what's let's see. Today's the twentieth. Eleven so, days. Yeah, eleven days. 11 days, well, I guess 12 days until we tell the game itself, but regardless, we got 11 days here to get ready for this. 
So we can either lie down and quit, or we can, you know, this is going to sound like cl cliche, but we can, you know, rise up, clean ourselves off, rethink things, and come out and whoop some ass on January 1st. And show people that, hey, we're not, we're not a one-hit wonder. We belong. We deserve our spot. Yep. So take, take your pick on what, what you want to be, and I think the choice for these guys would be obvious. It'd be the latter. You, re you rethink yourselves, you collect yourselves, you get your shit together, and you get ready to take on the, the number one team in the nation. And you've already beaten one number one. You know you can beat a number one team. You've done it once. Yeah. Time twice. And, of, and of course, uh, just to address the other uh, two spots, I mean, of course, it was number one Alabama. We were in at number four. Uh, and, of course, uh, Clemson and Ohio State are going to be playing one another in the uh, the Sugar Bowl. Uh, of course, uh, Ben, it'd be, it wouldn't be right if we didn't talk about this, but I want to get your thoughts first on Ohio State. I mean <laughs> – what do you think? Should should they really be in there? No. Ohio State does not does not deserve to be in this game at all. There is there is no reason for them to be in there. They didn't play enough games. There had to be an exception for them to get into the conference championship. They almost blew it against Northwestern to begin to to add. They almost blew it against Indiana. There is no reason that that they should be in there. A and M should be in Ohio State's spot. A&M should be, because I'm sorry, A&M had one loss coming into to today's day, okay, and that one loss was to number one Alabama, number one Alabama, okay, and they didn't get a chance at redemption at all, okay, you know, the two best teams in the ACC played each other in Clemson and Notre Dame, the two best SEC teams did not play in the championship yesterday. The two best teams would have been Alabama and A and M, not Alabama and Florida. Yeah, so I mean it was half right. So, you know, I, I if I'm A and M, I'm very very salty about Ohio State getting in. And yep. you look at body of work, but I mean, I'm sorry, A and M played way tougher opponents in the SEC than Ohio State did in the Big Ten. If Ohio State had beaten a 5 and 0 Michigan, a 4 and 0 Penn State, a 3 and 0 Michigan State, I'd give it to them. I'd give it to them. You beat undefeated teams. Okay, A&M did that. Ohio State didn't. All I can say is uh, in that matchup go Clemson. Oh yeah. I mean Clemson to me needs to mop the floor with Ohio State. They need to. And I cannot imagine what will happen if Ohio State beats Clemson. I mean, can you imagine if Ohio State actually beats Clemson? Yeah. What narratives will be? Now, I mean, you could go on the flip side and say, oh, well, Ohio State beat Clemson. Maybe they really do deserve to be here. You know, I mean, they beat Clemson for crying out loud. That's impressive. But, no, I, I, I yes, I'm with you 100%. Beat Ohio State and beat them to a pulp, you know, and we'll see. I will give some credit where it's due. Flor Florida, even though it, I feel it should have been A and M against Alabama, but of course, you know, you, you got to you got to win the conference games to make it happen. Um, Florida did give Bama a run for their money last night. I will say that they did yeah. they did challenge they did challenge hard at the end there and you know came up short by six. But yeah, I think I think we everyone gets the point. We've made our point on that. Um, but overall, I think the rest of the NY six was pretty. Uh, pretty fair for the most part except uh you know again florida <laughs> you know how how did they still get a a play a, a, a ny6 berth i don't know two straight losses you know uh, i can give you the alabama loss i mean that's the better team that's the number one team you know it was expected that alabama wins that game but to lose to lsu the way they did that that really hurts them you know, and I think the only way that they get in to the playoffs or even an NY6 berth is by beating Alabama, and they didn't do that. So it is what, you know. I, I got to say, I thought really thought this was the first time we were going to see two gr uh, group of five teams in because I, I really thought the uh, – I mean, Cincinnati getting the uh, the Peach Bowl berth against Georgia, 
you know, I'm happy for the Bearcats, but I, I really thought there was going to be some love for the, uh, the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. Yeah. I, I, it's just the way, unfortunately, it's the way the cards fall, fell. And uh, we need expansion. I mean, that's all there is. There, there needs to be eight teams in the playoffs at least. At the and very least, start with six. See how it goes. Go from there. I mean, and we'll save that for a different video. But, yeah, it, it, it's, it's sad. I feel, I feel really bad for A&M, and I feel really bad for Coastal Carolina and Cincinnati. I mean, they got, they got the short end of the stick this year for sure. Yeah. Well, Ben, um, I think we covered everything we had to in this video. This has actually been the longest video we've done for a while. <laughs> We're at 40 minutes right now. Um, so anything else you want to add? I got nothing. All right. So there you have it, folks. The Irish are in the national playoffs. Um, and again, to the Notre Dame Nation, you're either with us or you're, you're against us. Simple as that. And if you're against us, then get the hell out of the fan base. So on that note, this is ND Sean 45 This is Irish Benjamin 57 and on that note, as we always say, good night, God bless, and go Irish. Go Irish!